With the Dragon Ball Z being one of the heavyweight anime series, peaking back in the 90s and standing as the benchmark for other animes to strive for, it is hard to ignore that Dragon Ball has spawned many different films over the years, each movie containing some of the most unique villains. Well, not all of them. Vegeta, he stole your dude! I'll kill him! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> While some of the movie plots seem derivative to the timeline they convey, it doesn't do justice to some of the memorable moments those films have. So just like we have with my previous ranking videos, I'll be ranking the movie villains from weakest to strongest. Although yes, newer movie antagonists are usually more powerful than the previous, that's not entirely the case with every villain. Some villains are just built different. Therefore, we will start from the first DBZ movie, Dead Zone, from 1989 to Dragon Ball Super's Superhero Movie from 2022. To power scale these characters, I'll be using guidebooks, author statements, and in-universe logic to differentiate them. Therefore, I'll be ranking 17 movie villains. I will not count specials in this ranking video, so without further ado, let's get right to it. Goku. Once I've taken control of your body, I'll finally discard this ugly metal shell. Dr. Wheelow is the main antagonist of the world's strongest. He nearly died from an avalanche 50 years prior to the events of the movie. As a consequence, his brain was transferred into a giant android by his assistant, Dr. Kochen. In the movie, he sought out to take over the body of the strongest fighter on Earth. Now something we should establish early on throughout this video is that Dragon Ball Z movie villains are not canon to the main timeline. Well, at least the first 13 movies, as those movies weren't written by Akira Toriyama. Although yes, he has helped with designs of some of the characters, but he had little to do with the narrative. Even Akira Toriyama, the original author of Dragon Ball, has expressed that he sees the movies as alternative timelines of how things play out. Therefore, we must tread carefully when comparing characters from the canon timeline to their movie counterparts. For example, in the pamphlet of the movie World Strongest, the biomen that Masaroshi was shown to completely outclass each had the power level of 1000, meaning the real Masaroshi, if you don't count Dragon Ball Super, would not be able to actually put a dent on those creatures, as Roshi himself was officially documented to have the power level of 180 as his max. Daizenshu 7 also states that Roshi in his suppressed state has the power level of 139, which correlates perfectly with the manga. Roshi also has shown to fight quite fairly against the Bio Warriors in a 1v3 battle before being overwhelmed. These characters gave Goku in his base form quite a challenge before Goku used Kaioken to blitz them. Now, the reason why I cited power levels in the movies is even though the characters from movies scale differently compared to the main timeline, their powers and abilities are almost the same, as the world's strongest came right after the Saiyan Saga and the battle between Goku and Vegeta. As a result, the version that Toa Animation drafted into the movie is the exact Goku in terms of his abilities, as Goku was shown to have Kaioken and the Spirit Bomb. So while the power levels may differ, they still scale almost consistently to the main canon timeline. This is supported by the fact that Dr. Wheelow is noted in the pamphlet to have the power level of 39,000. Now, the reason why he's weaker than both Garlic Jr. and Goku Black, I mean Turles, will be clear very soon. You thought I was strong before. Watch this. <laughs> Turles, or Tullus, however you like to pronounce it, was a Saiyan working as part of the Frieza force, but he went rogue and established his own army, spreading his influence as he created what was known as the Turles Crusher Corps. Although nothing compared to the Saiyans from the present timeline, Turles is a low-class Saiyan with a power level that surpasses that of the Elite. Piccolo, who has been noted during the movie to have a power level of 18,000 by the Scouter, was utterly defeated by Turles. His power rivals Goku's power level of 30,000, making him much stronger than Vegeta. Vegeta who arrived to planet Earth during the Saiyan Saga with a power level of 18,000. Turles was only defeated thanks to the same power that gave him strength. Goku launches a super spirit bomb powered by the beacon of the gods themselves, using the power of the divine tree to destroy Turles along with it. Although Turles initially isn't as strong as Goku in the beginning of the fight, he takes one bite from the tree of might, increasing his strength to the point where he, the tide of battle shifted completely in his favor. He absolutely dominates Goku despite Goku having the Kaioken times 10. And since Goku was noted to have the power level of 30,000 at the beginning of the fight, 
and that power level caused Turles to retreat and eat the fruit, this means that the effects of the fruits was greater than the effects of the Kaioken times 10, making Turles go over 300k with just one bite. We later on see Turles consuming an entire fruit, meaning his power got even higher. How much higher, we aren't sure, but since one bite gave him around a 10 times boost, if not more, then perhaps eating an entire fruit would skyrocket his power into the millions. I would possibly assume that the effects of the fruits would lessen with each bite he takes, but to lowball, let's say his power level would go around 3 million, making him a contender to the lower forms of Frieza and much stronger than Dr. Wheelow. Now this may come to a surprise for a few if not many, how come the weakest movie villain gets this high on the list? And you know what? You are absolutely right. Garlic Jr. is categorically the weakest movie villain. In fact, his power level in the movie pamphlet was recorded to be at Beasley 1450, making him slightly stronger than Raditz. So what distinguishes Garlic Jr. from the previous two? Well, the obvious answer is that this Garlic Jr. comes back after the Frieza arc with a major power boost. The movie events were also mentioned during that arc. Therefore, the Garlic Jr. we see in the filler arc is the exact Garlic Jr. who lost to Gohan from the movie. The unhinged demon is still hellbent on dethroning the God of Earth and taking over the world. He cements his plan by being the first antagonist in the series to successfully wish for immortality. However, this came at a price, as after being overpowered by both Goku and Piccolo during the movie, he resorts to summoning the Dead Zone, a giant pocket dimension that was described in the Daizenshu as a hyperspace created through heightened ki, which sucks in everything. It is a space which freezes even one's body and soul, and which lets not even a streak of light escape. The Daizenshu also expands on this as it mentions that Garlic Jr. was going to use the power of the Dead Zone to suck the heavenly realm. You know what this means, Garlic Jr. with his pocket dimension that he opened was planning to suck up a realm that was described to be transcendental in size, a world which is infinite. This alone is a feat that probably puts Garlic Jr. up as a 4D character and up there as a contender to be one of the strongest movie villains. He was also mentioned to break out of the dead zone as the Makio star approached Earth. This caused his power to multiply from tens to dozens according to the Dragon Box catalog. However, abilities and hacks mean little in Dragon Ball when you don't have the power to back it, as Garlic Jr. was ultimately defeated by post Frieza Saga Gohan who destroyed the Makio star and sealed Garlic Jr. once again. So in terms of power level, I'd say Garlic Jr. and Turles are closely matched. Endes, the almighty Lord Slug has been reborn! Unbelievable! Like I just woke up from a dream! Like Garlic Jr., Lord Slug is an overlord planet conqueror that seeks the Dragon Balls for his quest of taking over the universe. He uses the wish of the Dragon Balls to regain his youth, a reference to King Piccolo in early Dragon Ball. However, Lord Slug is a significantly stronger opponent. He's one of the oldest Namekians that survived the great calamity that occurred. He is very powerful that Goku stood no chance against him in his base form. He outclasses a post Namek Saga Goku, as this movie came out during episode 82 and 83 of the anime, and right before Goku going Super Saiyan during the manga. The reason why I'm highlighting this is because usually characters that we see in movies scale to their canon counterparts. Do not misunderstand what I said. I am not saying movie Goku is equal to anime Goku. However, the Goku you see in this movie has more or less the same abilities that anime Goku has. This is why in this movie, Goku for the first time on screen achieves Super Saiyan. Well, not really. But this is the Super Saiyan form that Toei Animation envisioned for Goku, a cheap knockoff to the original. He also has a time limit to his form, hence why it's been called in the Dragon Ball community as Pseudo Super Saiyan. But make no mistake, King Kai himself dubbed that form as Super Saiyan. Now the main reason why I believe Lord Slug is a level stronger than the previous characters on this list is because King Kai himself states in the movie that perhaps not even Frieza or a Super Saiyan can beat Lord Slug. This support Guru's statements in the anime that Super Namekians are one of the most dominant species in the entire universe. It would take a literal Super Saiyan to defeat them. 
But like I said, this movie scales to the events on Namek, as Frieza was mentioned as a benchmark to illustrate how strong Lord Slug is. So an argument can be made that Lord Slug isn't as powerful as the full-powered final form Frieza, nor is he more powerful than the real Super Saiyan. However, this could be contradicted and debunked with something not many people knew about. In the Weekly Jump 1991 issue number 12, it was stated that the Kaioken that Goku does against Lord Slug after receiving Piccolo's helping hand is actually a Kaioken times 100. Meaning that if we choose to believe that this Goku is as powerful as base Goku when he fought Frieza, then a times 100 Kaioken makes him more powerful than his anime counterpart. However, I personally don't think it's true as Lord Slug ultimately lost the fight against a spirit bomb powered by one sun, whereas Goku's super spirit bomb on Namek was powered by the solar system of Namek, which included the planets nearby and the three suns. And something you should know about the spirit bomb, the size of the Genkidama dictates how strong it is. Frieza survived a bigger spirit bomb, so while there are evidence that suggests Lord Slug is stronger, I'd say if we take into account feats and factor in that this movie took place in a timeline where Frieza was possibly killed by the Genkidama on Namek, then Lord Slug in my own opinion would be around 50% Frieza. However, if you disagree let me know, I would love to know your take on this. Cooler is Frieza's older brother that appeared in the fifth Dragon Ball Z movie. He came to Earth for the single goal of finishing off the rumored Saiyan who disgraced his family. Cooler is the polar opposite to his brother Frieza in mannerisms. He is a lot less patient and doesn't play around for long. He reveals to Goku that while Frieza thought he had the edge against him all those years, Cooler managed to transcend the Emperor of the Universe as he unlocks the fifth transformation of their race, ascending to a level where he absolutely dunks on base Goku. This Goku was described by Cooler to be strong enough to be able to contend with Final Form Frieza. So this movie could very well be a continuation of the Lord Slug movie, where Goku managed to defeat Frieza without unlocking Super Saiyan. This was proven by the fact that Goku was only able to unlock the legendary status at the end of the movie. Additionally, V-Jump Magazine has Cooler's final form power level to be around 470 million, making him a lot stronger than his younger brother who only mustered the power level of 120 million in his 100% state. So while Lord Slug is comparable to Frieza, Cooler is leagues above Frieza. Well, at least the Frieza from Dragon Ball Z. We all know what happened after that. The Frieza race are just known for their incredible resilience. Just like Frieza coming back from the brink of death multiple times, Cooler seems to take things personally against Frieza as he basically comes back to life after impressively surviving the engulfing flames of the sun. This should have killed him, but he managed to come back thanks to the Bigetti Star. It is a self-aware AI inside of a computer chip floating in space for eons. Somehow, the chip began absorbing and assimilating debris from several abandoned space ships and satellites, forming a shell of metal and circuitry around itself. In the process of absorbing things in its way, it came into contact with Cooler, who was absorbed into the star. However, Cooler was so powerful that his consciousness took over this machine and thus created a new improved body for himself, an army of meta coolers, each one of them stronger than the previous final form Cooler, as evident by Super Saiyan Goku who struggled against one meta cooler. It took the combination of two Super Saiyans to go all out and defeat just one meta cooler. Also, I'd like to go off script for a moment here and just mention how I absolutely love the Return of Cooler movie. It is absolutely a fantastic movie. I really recommend that anyone who didn't watch it to give it a try. <laughs> A 
Like I mentioned, Dragon Ball movies usually take inspiration from the main canonical timeline. This instance is no different, as the seventh movie comes around the same time as the Android arc. Therefore, Toei makes the not so creative idea of simply introducing more androids. These androids were spawned by Dr. Jiro's basement computer that was working on these models even after his death. It creates a cheap knockoff of Cell, Android 13, who absorbs other androids and incorporates the android mechanical parts into his body, thus transforming himself into an embarrassing knockoff of a Super Saiyan looking android. I know it seems that I'm not the biggest fan of not Broly here, but I can't deny that he is very powerful. He completely dominates Z Fighters and wrecks all the Super Saiyans in addition to Piccolo. It took Goku to summon the Spirit Bomb, and based on its size, Goku must have powered it by the solar system. Goku then absorbs the power of the Spirit Bomb while in Super Saiyan and use that power to vaporize the overpowered machine. While we could argue that an army of meta coolers can overwhelm a single Super 13, they aren't as strong individually. <laughs> Bojack is an interesting character. He belongs to one of the few Dragon Ball Z movies that could slot in perfectly in the timeline with little issue. This movie takes place after the defeat of Cell during the seven year period prior to the start of the Boo arc. Goku is also dead in the movie as Goku has died in the series when he sacrificed his life against Cell in order to save the Earth. I honestly debated a lot with myself on whether I should place Bojack a bit higher, perhaps higher than Broly from movie 8. However, the more I think about it, the clearer it gets that his placement on this list is fair. As while well, yes, Bojack has fought a Super Saiyan Grade 2 Vegeta and Super Saiyan Grade 2 Trunks and managed to defeat them pretty easily, he also fought all these characters after the Cell games, making these characters significantly stronger. However, he was basically one-shotted by a Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, making Bojack on the level of a perfect Cell. You could also argue that he's as strong or slightly weaker than Super Perfect Cell, should you choose to believe that the Gohan that Bojack fought is exactly as strong as the one we have seen during the Cell games. But I digress, I don't think he's m more powerful than Broly. Kakarot, how much do you love your son? Gohan, leave! <laughs> The legendary Super Saiyan Broly is an absolute monster. To say that this dude is built different is an understatement. He is the epitome of Saiyan power. He embodies the limitless strength of the Saiyan race. His power is so immense that he could make the gods in Dragon Ball Z gravel before his feet. Even the Prince of All Saiyans wanted nothing to do with him. To defeat the legendary Super Saiyan, you needed another legendary Super Saiyan. Goku's unyielding tenacity in addition to the help of all the other Saiyans and also plot basically saying the movie is about to end so let's wrap it up, Goku managed to overcome the demon Saiyan and one shot him. Like I said previously, I debated with myself a little on whether Bojack was stronger than Broly from movie 8. However, the more I examine the two movies, the clearer it gets that Bojack isn't on the level of Broly. While yes, there are statements that suggest Bojack has the power to shake the galaxy, Broly on the other hand managed to absolutely wipe out the South Galaxy. This in itself is a feat that regards Broly to be one of the toughest villains in the show, as the South Galaxy itself in the Daizenshu is described to be a quadrant with an infinite number of galaxies. This implies that Broly himself could be multi galactic, which isn't a surprise since Broly also managed to take on many Super Saiyans at once, whereas Bojack had his squad helping him dominate the Dragon Team. These Super Saiyans have been described in the previous movie to have infinite power, however we can take this grandiose title with a pinch of salt. However, I personally see Broly in movie 8 to be a lot stronger than Bojack. I also wanted to check the pamphlets to find any additional information. There I found that it stated that Goku defeated Broly with an amped power of 1000 times 
more ki. This could largely imply that the power that Goku received from his allies could suggest that it made him a thousand times stronger. I honestly feel like the more we go with the pamphlets and sources, I can't seem to feel that these statements are a bit exaggerated, as these movies always want to top the previous films. For example, it was mentioned during the Return of Cooler movie that the power of the Super Saiyan Goku and Vegeta was infinite. So this could likely be a hyperbole statement by the authors. But let me know what you guys think. If you guys disagree, feel free to comment down below. Okay, I'll admit, I lied to you, we are not ranking 17 different movies, but rather 18, as I included the OVA Plan to Eradicate the Super Saiyans, an animation that hasn't got too much spotlight and not many fans knew about. If you haven't watched the special, I'll refrain from spoiling the plot for you, so instead I'll highlight the main villain of the special, Hachiyak. Spawned by the sheer hatred towards the Saiyans, Hachiyak is an absolute unit. He wrecks the Z-Warriors and make absolute light work out of them. Even Goku blatantly states that Hachiyak is stronger than Broly. This means this special takes place after the events of Movie 8. And to further solidify Goku's statements, King Kai also backs them up when he says he's never sensed a key like this before, despite King Kai knowing and gauging Broly's power in Movie 8. King Kai further adds that Hajiyak is a threat to the entire universe, so we can say with absolute confidence that Hajiyak is stronger than Movie A Broly. <laughs> Oh, did I say Hajiak was stronger? Yes, only stronger than movie 8 Broly, because as you know, if there is one character that loves coming back in the movies, it's Broly, who makes yet another appearance in the 10th movie installment. After being defeated by the hands of Goku in the previous film, Broly's unwavering quest and thirst for revenge is reignited after 7 years. He appears on Earth and fights against a Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, giving Gohan a more difficult fight than either Cell or Dabura could. And Gohan, even in his Super Saiyan 2 state could not push back Broly's obscene power. Now quickly, for the people who have debated that Gohan wasn't in his Super Saiyan 2 form in this movie due to the absence of the blue lightning, allow me to quickly debunk you in less than 5 seconds. In the Daizenshu guidebook, the design for Gohan Movie 10 was shown and clearly stated that he was in his Super Saiyan 2 form. The lack of the blue lightning was probably an oversight by the animation. Nothing more. Regardless on whether you think Gohan was SSJ 1 or 2 doesn't change that Broly was stated to be stronger in this movie thanks to the Zenkai he received. As you know, Saiyans take the term what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger, quite literally. Broly was only defeated again thanks to the collective powers of the family Kamehameha, which put an end to Broly once and for all. Or at least, that's what everyone in the fanbase was hoping for, because the next movie brings back Broly in the shittiest way possible. No, that's not a figure of speech, dude is covered in gross goo. Now, I along many people used to genuinely believe this was the weakest version of Broly given the fact that he was in a movie where the protagonists were Goten, Trunks, and Android 18. And Broly was ultimately defeated by... water. Yeah, I, I really hope I was joking. What? What the fuck? This movie wasn't the most creative thing that Toei did. However, putting aside the underwhelming execution in this film, if we examine the movie guidebook, the Broly we see was stated to be the strongest version of DBZ Broly. So, yeah. Our problem just got a lot bigger. Next up is the behemoth kaiju known as Herudagon? Herudagarn? Uh, fuck it, big monster. He is a powerful demon god that displays no other emotion other than rage or hatred. In his first state, he has a face that resembles a human skull, symbolizing that he is death. In fact, many millennia ago, the Herudagon demon soul resides inside a statue that purifies people evil key, and basically acted a vessel that sucks the life force out of people. Think of Cell, but on a massively larger scale. 
After his soul broke free thanks to the Kashvars, they unleashed a monster that was a threat to the entire universe. No ordinary Super Saiyan or Super Namek could have stood up to him. Upon being unleashed, a Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta post Buu Saga stood no chance to the first form of this monster. There is a nice scene where Vegeta uses all his ki and power to simply nullify the attack coming at him in order to save the bystanders next to him. Even Ultimate Gohan who could take on Super Buu fell under his feet. Harudagarn took his godly powers to the next level when he transformed into a second form and becomes even stronger than Goten's Super Saiyan 3, who became fodder to him. It's only when Goku summons his most devastating attack, the Super Dragon Fist, a one-shot technique that Goku utilizes after he figures out the giant monster's weak point. He uses an opening which Harudagarn isn't able to shift to his phantom state. Goku proceeds to exterminate the godly creature and cements himself as number one. Now, the reason why I put the Goliath over Broly is the very fact that Broly never fought these caliber of characters. His biggest fight was against a Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, and if we assume this Gohan is the same Gohan from the canon timeline, then we can gauge Broly's approximate strength, as Gohan was overwhelmed very easily by Fat Buu, almost being one-shotted. Gohan was so intimidated by Fat Buu's strength that he completely ditches the fight but get outpaced by Buu instantly, where Super Saiyan 3 Goku could have defeated Fat Buu if he opted. Now putting feats aside, which I'm sure is what people are going to bring out is irrelevant point, cause Broly was ultimately defeated by two Super Saiyan characters that were basically fatigued during the fight, and Goku assisted and was what I would assume his Super Saiyan 2 form. In addition, in movie 11, it was implied at the end of the film that Goku went to hell and defeated Broly there. So even if we take Koyama's statements of Broly is the strongest, he has other statements that contradicts that when he outright says that every villain is stronger than the last. So clearly Koyama's bias towards his favorite character. But if we will look at it objectively, the DBZ Broly caps out in the third place of the original 13 DBZ movies. <laughs> The movie Fusion Reborn is a complete standout to its predecessors. While most of the previous movies had animation on par if not slightly better than the original Dragon Ball Z anime, Fusion Reborn takes it to a new level. With stunning visuals, breathtaking fighting choreography, and not to mention Goku's Super Saiyan 3 who never looked better. Not even in Dragon Ball Super after 20 years could match this. And speaking of unmatched, this movie introduces what I believe is the strongest Dragon Ball Z movie villain, Super Janimba, the embodiment of evil that knows no bound to his strength. He is the manifestation of eons of evil souls, just as existence itself managed to reconstruct the fabric of reality of hell to his own will. This itself is a monstrous feat as every universe in the macrocosm is described to be infinite and Janimba managed to reshape a world above that, as the other world is stated to be beyond the concepts of space and time in the super exciting guide, being a realm that transcends the mortal universe. All of this was like a child's plaything next to the godly powers of Janimba. Goku pushed his Super Saiyan string to the level that transcends the form which already transcended the legendary Super Saiyan, with Goku's aura alone that managed to shake the afterlife itself. You know what this means, right? Goku in Super Saiyan 3 has the power that transcends the universe, as heaven itself was described as big as the universe and the world of the Grand Kai is massively bigger than that, as his mansion alone has a pocket dimension with endless planets and stars. The official Toei website also reaffirms this as it states that it is indeed a universe scale world. Goku just powering up managed to shake a beyond infinite construct reality that contains other infinite voids. Even the Grand Kai himself could not believe Goku's obscene power. Evil itself looked at Goku with fear and its face. Goku pays compliments to Jinemba telling him that he's the first person after Majin Buu to push him to Super Saiyan 3. Goku then absolutely claps Jinemba around, defeating him in an instant. But this is where everything changes. Jinemba after being defeated transforms to the strongest movie villain, Super Jinemba. A character that absolutely wiped the floor with Super Saiyan 3 Goku, using his abilities to alter reality and shape-shifting by deconstructing his body at will. Janimpa had so much raw power and hacks that a character that literally shook the afterlife was fodderized quickly. It took Gogeta, the angel born in hell and has strength that goes beyond infinite, and his speed was so irrelevant making his power possibly outversal.
as he could construct an attack so violently powerful and so gracefully looking that it completely erases Jinemba on the molecular level, making this attack the closest thing to Hakai. There is one more thing I want to add, is that in the beginning of the movie, we saw Goku innocently inviting Jinemba to fight him in hell. What many people including me for years didn't notice, this little trip that both Jinemba and Goku took makes their speed irrelevant as they basically traveled an infinite distance between the check-in station and below. Now with all this in context, I do realize Koyama, the writer of the Dragon Ball Z movies, has mentioned that he likes to scale each movie villain to the main timeline, as he himself said that he didn't know exactly what was going on with the production while he was working on his story. Stories. However, that doesn't mean movie Goku is equal to canon Goku. Even movies are considered by Koyama to not be necessarily linked to each other in the same timeline. But even if you like to humor Koyama and take his word that Broly is the strongest, I still find it difficult to justify it based on the scaling and story of these movies. Regardless, I believe Janimba is the strongest, and if you disagree with me then please let me know in the comments down below. However, we're not done yet, we still have 4 movies to go through. Now let's embark to the Dragon Ball Super movie timeline. His power, it's amazing! What? Frieza has a new form! <laughs> I know gold's a bit gauche, but I wanted to ensure you grasp my new position atop the pecking order. For several years, Frieza was fodderized thanks to the Super Saiyan strength acquired by the Saiyans. Each time he makes a return or cameo, he gets immediately obliterated. That's when Frieza makes the unthinkable decision for a creature of his caliber. He decides that he must train for only 4 months. This short amount of time managed to shoot his power from being on the level of Super Saiyan Goku and Namek to Super Saiyan Blue. While Saiyans have limitless potential, Frieza is on a whole other dimension when it comes to power. Someone who never trained once in his life could destroy planet Vegeta, though it's stated to be at least 10 times greater than Earth due to their gravity. He does that in his suppressed state with a power level of only 530,000. Frieza pushes the boundaries of what it means to have the last health bar of the final boss as every time his power seems to be capped, he pushes it far beyond, mustering the power level of 120 million in his final form during the fight on Namek. His new base power in the movie in 2015 makes him trade blows with a base form of Goku that is stronger than Super Saiyan 3 during DBZ, as Goku managed to retain the godly powers of Super Saiyan God in his base form. While that doesn't mean this state is equivalent to Super Saiyan God, God Goku. However, the power increase he got is ridiculous. Frieza was able to keep up with Goku and force him to go Super Saiyan Blue. This is when Frieza claps back with his new golden form. He could have overwhelmed Goku had he trained a bit more to adapt to his new transformation, as the golden form drained a lot of stamina which led to his downfall. Now imagine if Frieza trained 10 years instead of 4 months. I mean, who can imagine how powerful he'd become? We have met many gods in the Dragon Ball universe. The concept of gods was never anything special. By the end of the original Dragon Ball, Goku has transcended godly characters and became number one. However, in 2013, we have met the first character that personifies the godlike status bestowed upon him. Beerus, the god of destruction, is a character who had no equal in the universe. Well, apart from his teacher Whis. He prophesized the rise of a Saiyan god that could rival his power and give him a good fight. This came in the shape of Goku's Super Saiyan God, a form that could trade blows with the God of Destruction even though his legendary Super Saiyan 3 form was utterly one-shotted and defeated with a single blow. Now the reason why Beerus does not top the list is simple. I'm only using movie Beerus who's significantly weaker than his anime counterpart, which has seemingly had his power retconned a few times and is basically acting like a moving flag for Goku to catch on. The flag seems to be moving based on however the authors feel like. But in the case of Beerus from Battle of Gods, he was scaled by the creator of the franchise himself, Akira Toriyama, who stated that if Goku was a 6 out of 10 in terms of power, then Beerus will be a 10 out of 10. This was reaffirmed by Whis who explicitly stated that Beerus used 70% of his strength against Super Saiyan God Goku, who is significantly weaker than current Goku from the manga and the anime. Also, the reason why I put Beerus above Frieza is that it was implied that Beerus could have stopped him and even Goku's Super Saiyan Blue didn't quite catch up to Beerus in the movie Resurrection F. <laughs> For
For this one, I won't beat around the bush. I, like many others in the Dragon Ball community, was a little bit disappointed with the fact that we had Cell coming back only to have, well, a 15 minute cameo of him being a brainless meathead. There isn't much to discuss about his character compared to how strong he was. He managed to defeat Orange Piccolo who's been noted by Toriyama to have power that rivals Goku and Vegeta. He also overwhelmed the Gammas together who are also comparable to Goku and Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue. Yet Orange Piccolo one-shotting one of them couldn't defeat Cell Max. However, despite Cell Max being incredibly powerful, he had two major flaws that I think holds him back from becoming the strongest movie villain. First of all, he was a mindless version of what he would have become, making his movements primal and more predictable. His control over his ki also became limited as a result. This is evident by a character like Kale that got powerful by simply controlling her rage. This is also not too dissimilar from Goku in his golden form that was overcome by rage and fury. But once he could remember who he was, he mutated to a form more suited for utilizing his full potential. The second major flaw which became Cell's biggest downfall is his video game final boss weakness, which hitting him directly in the head hard enough can lead to his defeat. These two factors hold him back from becoming the most powerful movie villain. In an interview with Akira Toriyama, he states that had Cell Max been completed, he could have been an opponent that not even Broly could defeat. These author statements alone could suggest that Broly from the 2018 movie is the strongest Dragon Ball movie villain of all time. Well, at least of me making this video. While yes, perhaps in raw power, Cell Max might have been more powerful if we take the statements of Gohan that not even Goku or Vegeta could have stood up to him. It still doesn't change the fact that he has two major flaws that slowed him down. One being his mind, or rather, the lack thereof. And also, his weakness. Even Gamma 2 sacrificing himself managed to weaken Cell Max and render one of his arms useless. The Gamma themselves are about equal to Goku and Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue, as evident with how the Gammas can fight on par with Ultimate Goku, who also fought against a Super Saiyan Blue Goku in the anime. Broly just has too much going on for him. He managed to completely dominate both Goku and Vegeta in their Super Saiyan blue forms. His wrath stayed alone, the form prior to using Super Saiyan, where he could utilize the powers of the Great Ape without changing shape. Similar to the effects of Super Saiyan 4, he absolutely ragdolls Goku in God Mode. So even in his early stages, Broly personifies the ridiculous nature of the Saiyan race. He adopts quicker than any Saiyan, learns as he fights, gets stronger as the fights go on, and also goes through multiple transformations. The mere fact that he could trade blows with Gogeta shows how obscenely powerful he is, as Gogeta is cumulative power and experience of Goku and Vegeta mixed and multiplied. Not only is Gogeta super experienced and powerful, but his fighting IQ far exceeds his individual counterparts. This Gogeta used Super Saiyan Blue in order to make Broly hit the wall and stop getting stronger. He went from being weaker than Super Saiyan 1 Vegeta in the beginning of the fight to fighting what was essentially the strongest Saiyan in history up to that point. Also, Goku compares Broly to Beerus, saying that he might be stronger than him. Whether that's true or not is high praise enough to make Broly one of the most dangerous creatures in the universe. So while Broly couldn't top the Dragon Ball Z movie list, I think he is as of now the strongest Dragon Ball Super movie villain. <laughs> Even when some Dragon Ball movies aren't canon to the main timeline, it seems fans can't have enough of them. With more than 18 films if we count the original Dragon Ball, there is always much to discuss and talk about. I had so much fun making this long video and I put so much research, time and effort to make it as digestible to your minds as possible. I tried to include more feats and sources to justify my rankings. As a consequence, this video got a lot longer. So let me know if you're a fan of this longer video format or you'd like me to make shorter videos like my earlier ranking videos. Speaking of which, I already made 5 ranking videos prior to this video, so please watch those videos and support the channel. Also, let me know what was your favorite movie villain. But other than that, this was your host Muzi, so please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.